transport dock ship. Now, it's a new ship. It's only two years old. It had the new ship smell on it. it. Still had the new ship smell. And I love warships. And I love meeting the young people who make this ship run. They usually take Marines into harm's way. They are known as, in the parlance of the guys and the women who run them, as the taxi for the, for the Marines. You know, and despite what Obama has done to the military, despite his decapitation of the command structure in order to render the military somewhat like uh, the, uh, the Soviet Navy before it lost its interchange with the Japanese Navy in the early 1900s, yeah, oh, that's what happened. You know, the Soviets once had the most powerful Navy in the world, so they thought. And these dreadnoughts went up against the young, aggressive Japanese Navy, and they were decimated. And Obama, of course, would like to see that happen to this Navy. We know that. But it's not going to happen. Because I met some of the most wonderful people in the world on that ship. The men and women who actually make the ship run. And they're, they're still there. These ships would not run if it wasn't for these, how shall I put it? They stand straight and tall. Their shoulders are back. They're made of iron. They're brave and they love America. There's no other way to put it. And I love being aboard this ship because it's named for... Why, why do you think the ship is called the USS Somerset? The Somerset was named for... You know what? Does anyone know what Somerset is referenced to? United Airlines Flight 93. When the vermin called Islamo-Fascists. Islamo, I-S-L-A-M-O, hyphen fascists, the Muslim terrorist bastards, flew those planes into the World Trade Center, then into Pennsylvania. This ship was created in namesake for the people who died aboard that flight. And there's a memorial wall to them, and it's pretty stirring to see the people have not forgotten who they are. Remember, the passengers and crew were able to make calls from the flight and then learn of the events that were unfolding at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. And realizing then that their plane was under attack by the Islamo vermin, the passengers decided to take action. And their heroic stand lasted only a few minutes. But their actions reverberate loudly today right now on the Savage Nation. And at 10.03, the plane crashed into a reclaimed coal strip mine in Stony Creek Township in Somerset County, PA. You should know that had it not been for the brave actions of these people aboard that plane who knew they were going to die, but chose to try to kill the vermin, the filthy vermin who took over that plane. The Islamo-fascist vermin would have reached their intended target and countless more lives would have been lost. And so the ship is named in their memory. It should stand as a uh, reminder to all of us that all of us can play a role in fighting the fascists who are now trying to take over the world. Make no mistake about it. They're everywhere, and Obama's importing them as quickly as possible. Now, I didn't say he's seeking out ISIS members, but I also didn't say he's not seeking out ISIS members. If you flood America with Muslims from a war zone, can anyone listening to this show, no matter how brainwashed you are, can you honestly tell me that you know which one of them is a genuine refugee and which one of them may be an ISIS member hiding as a refugee? You know you can't. You say, well, what do I care? Well, if you don't care, then don't listen to the show. Go listen to NPR. Go waste your time listening to garbage. Because this country, this world that you live in, is under attack on a daily basis. If you think it's hyperbole, I can't help you. It means that your head is in the sand. We are fighting a world war. And guess who's winning? It's not us. And that's because we lack a commander-in-chief. We have a lying, thieving commander-in-chief who refuses to acknowledge the enemy itself. How do I know that's true? Why am I so alarmed about the fact that ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and the other Islamo-fascists around the world are not being decimated, not being degraded, not being defeated, but are in fact metastasizing into a cancer that could sweep over the entire world that you live in? Why do I say it? Even Cameron of England two weeks ago corrected Obama when they were on a panel at the UN, and Obama dared say that all religions have terrorists in them, and Cameron had to literally catch him and say, now, Barack, we've both fought them together, and you know that it's particularly Islamic fascists that threaten the world. And Obama didn't change his tune. He didn't lose a beat. Because Obama's on a tear here. He is on a tear. 
And you have to ask yourself why he won't put Islamo next to it when even Muslims understand that it's connected to Islam. How can you call Islamic State not Islamic State? What are they? What are they? The Buddhist state? The Jewish state? The Christian state? The Hindu state? The Zoroastrian state? They want a fundamentalist 7th century world to emerge on the planet. And you won't survive in it. Your wife will be in a burqa. Your daughter will be mu sexually mutilated. You will live in, in, a, in a hell you could never imagine. But you wouldn't know that given the media that we have today. And so, as I say, we have the warships, we have the planes, we have the tanks, we have the missiles, we have weapons that we can't even imagine, but we don't have the leadership. The commander-in-chief has decapitated the leadership. The ships still sail, the planes still fly, but they don't hit the targets. Yeah, that's another thing I noticed. As he's displacing the white people in America with folks from everywhere on Earth except Europe, did you notice that he's pushing the Jews kind of in the background and bringing in the Arabs? And that there's a, a lot of crime against Jews in America? Didn't notice that either, huh? The last to notice that will be the liberal Jews. Oh, yeah, they're the last to notice anything. Geniuses, billionaires, trillionaires, geniuses in art, medicine, science, business. They don't even notice what's going on around them in their own country. A Molotov cocktail was thrown at two Orthodox Jews in the middle of the streets of New York yesterday by an Arab who said, I will kill you. Everywhere you turn, you see this going on. But all right, don't pay attention. Put your head in the sand. I got to talk about this for a minute. Because, you know, there's one thing I'm not going to tolerate. Stupidity. I will not tolerate it no matter who it comes from. Left, right, center. But when I hear, when I hear people get on the radio who you trust and say to you that there's no such thing as worrying about fat or cholesterol and food, that it's all hogwash. I'm sorry, I have to criticize it. And then to have the audacity to say that you believe it because the government tells you to believe it? I'm sorry, this is my field. And I'm not going to listen to an uneducated dolt talking to, to you about health and, and medicine. I won't listen to it. You know, medicine is based upon science. Science is a process. Science is based upon evidence. The evidence is very clear, not pretty clear, very, very clear that those who eat high cholesterol, high saturated fat diets, die at a much higher rate of coronary heart disease, atherosclerosis in specific. It's not a disease of the heart, it's a disease of the blood vessels. This has been well known for a long period of time, going back to the 1950s. The best studies in the early days were by the Shoot Brothers, S-H-U-T-E, geniuses, and you never heard of them, who showed definitively that if you use mega doses of vitamin E, you can reverse this. Then there were the great studies on other things that built slowly to the epidemiological studies which showed, especially the Framingham study in Framingham, Mass, of huge numbers of people, again, definitively showing those who were on high cholesterol, high fat diets, had much higher rates of atherosclerosis, therefore heart disease. And you have to know this is based on scientific evidence, not upon feelings. So you say, well, how do you, how do you explain those who live to 90 who eat garbage diets and smoke cigars and drink whiskey? I, I defined them in 1983 in a book of mine as nutritional rogues. There are always going to be people who can abuse their bodies and live to a ripe old age. The rest of us are not as blessed as the nutritional rogues. Most of us aren't. They're the outliers. Most of us don't have that luck. You see what I'm saying? So we have to like watch what we eat, we exercise. That's common sense. But to throw all of common sense out with the anti-government rhetoric that is raging in the, in the right-wing community now is nonsensical and sickening. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. There's something about the defeatism of this uh, snake in the White House. Somebody's got to do something. Someone has to say something. Here's a guy who goes on 60 Minutes. We have one newsman willing to stand up to the liar, and he, he squirms out of everything. He'll never cop to anything he does. Why? Because he's gotten away with it his whole life. Everyone's been afraid to say one word to him that's real. His whole life he's gotten away with liar, lies. Shall I play the 60 Minutes interview or not? This is a good interview, I got to tell you. Let's start with 
uh, clip one. This was your president on 60 Minutes with one newsman left in the United States of America on television. Listen to clip one. The last time we talked was this time last year, uh, and the situation in Syria and Iraq had begun to worsen vis-a-vis -vis right. ISIS. And you had just unveiled uh, a plan right. to provide air support for troops in Iraq and also some airstrikes in Syria and the training and equipping of a moderate Syrian force. You said that this would degrade and eventually destroy ISIS. Over time. Over time. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it's it. been a year. year. Right? Mm -hmm. and yeah. Okay, keep going. I didn't going. say it was going to be done in a year. No. Over okay. time. Yeah, right away he has an but excuse. You said, There's a question in What, over a thousand years? Maybe over a thousand years you'll degrade America. Never answer a question, never admit defeat. Constantly bamboozle people with your lies. Okay, here we go to the next one. I don't want to uh, go to two. Go to three. Go to clip three. Here's your president again, lying his way out of an interview with Steve Croft. What we've been able to do is to stall ISIL's momentum, to Lie. take away some of the key uh, land that they were holding. Liar. To push back, particularly in Iraq, Liar. Uh, against some population centers that they threatened. Liar. And in Syria, we've been able to and disrupt a number of their operations. But liar. what we have not been able to do so far, and I'm the first one to acknowledge this, is it's to nothing. change the dynamic inside of Syria. Oh, and come on. the goal here All right, let's stop been, here. He's gotten away with talking where he hears his own voice, and he starts to believe his own lies. You know, there's a saying, don't, don't, uh, how shall I put it this way? My friend uh, put it another way. To thine own self do not BS. He's a very wealthy man, my friend. He sold a company for hundreds of millions of dollars that he built out of nothing. He's an older gentleman. He said, to thine own self, do not BS. I guess nobody taught that to Mr. Obama. So he's gotten away with it all his life. And the, the sycophants, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, sir. Yeah, well, go on. Let's go on. To find a way in which we can help moderate opposition on the ground no such existing but thing we've never been in, under any illusion that oh, militarily no. yeah. we ourselves yeah. can solve the problem uh -huh. inside of syria why not what do you mean you're under the illusion i guess russia has that illusion i guess putin is the illusionist and you're not you're the realist we've never been under any illusion that militarily we ourselves can solve the problem inside of syria first of all the liar boasted last week that he has a coalition of 60 countries